we're going to make the call on Ten Hag's future after the cup final. By then we'll ha know if we've achieved uh, that Europa League status. We're in two scenarios to get to this. Finish sixth or above, and above is not realistic, as Spurs are six points in front and have a game in hand, or win the cup. At the minute, Newcastle are seventh and within a point, with a better goal difference than us, and if they catch us and we don't win the FA Cup, we're in the Europa Conference League next season. Time for Ten Hag to go if that happens. There is talk of the return of Solskjaer. At this stage, I wouldn't object. I don't really think there are any real standout candidates out there, and he understands the club better than most. Whoever comes in, or even if Eric Ten Hag stays, they must set their stall out early on and take no nonsense from pampered stars. Discipline is obviously lacking and it needs to be revisited and standards need to be set and kept up with no exceptions. Also, it's time for to clear out the dead wood on massive wages. If you add up how much their poor performances have cost the club regarding not making the Champions League, etc. and the continuing cost of their wages, then I get rid of a lot of these guys in a heartbeat even if it was at a so-called loss. The loss can't be any greater than we're currently experiencing. Okay, let's look at a few of the ones I would target for going. Everyone knows that Luke Shaw is injury prone. That's the only reason his United future is still being questioned. When he's been fit, he's hands down the best left back in the league. He slots in at left centre back with equal ease. Quality wise, there's no one better. But can we afford to continue to have a player in the squad who we get so little consistent game time out of? That's a question that has to be answered. Casemiro is on a contract worth around £350,000 a week and two years still left on it. His legs are gone, he's off the pace in most games while also being a liability in the tackle and that wage is now a burden on the club. Sending himself and Varane on contracts of this nature was pure madness. It means United are waiting to discover whether the Saudi Pro League are ready to commit to another big summer of spending in the hope that a market for older, higher earning players will open up and we can get some offloads into that market. How many players over the last four seasons have we allowed to get through the medical net um, and all of a sudden they develop injuries when we get them? It's obvious that there's something radically wrong with our assessment procedure and let's hope any of us can do better business in this regard going forward. Another player continuing the spotlight for all the wrong reasons at the minute is Rashford. And I do actually think his departure would be positive for the squad morale while also providing us with funds to help with rebuilding the squad. Another definite target for me is Anthony. Despite last week's goal against Burnley, Jesus, that's his first league goal of the season. Nowhere near the standard required for a Premier League player, let alone a United player. Although I'm more in favour of that reef bill beginning with an internal troll of our current talent and utilising it as it's much better uh, to do it that way. Our greatest successes have come when we have begun rebuilds from within. All of the stories coming out about the majority of players being up for sale in my mind is very encouraging and it should put players on their guard regarding attitude and also performance levels. The only hope we have going forward is if players realise they can't coast along at Manchester United Football Club. The focus must be on the importance of sticking to the United way. Sir Alex Ferguson arrived at Manchester United in 1986 with a clear vision. To build a football club from the ground up, he knew that to create a strong team he needed to focus on nurturing young talent. So he revamped United's youth programme setting up centres for promising players as young as nine and recruiting scouts to find the best talent. Among Ferguson's early signings were future legends like David Beckham and Ryan Giggs and these players alongside Paul Scholes and Gary Neville formed the core of United's successful teams in the late 90s and early 2000s. The tradition of developing youth talent at Manchester United dates back to the legendary Sir Matt Busby, who created the famous Busby Babes despite tragedy striking in 1958. So any real change must start with a clear out. It's the only way to send a clear message of intent. You're either here to win or you're not, and if you're not, it's time to pack your bags. Make sure you're hitting like, share and subscribe. I'm Jerry Kelly, the Irish Red Devil. Thanks for watching. Thanks.